Why are we surprised Barr covered up Trump's treason when he did the same thing for George H.W. Bush and Ronald Reagan? And he sure enough did. I mean, uh, you know, Jeffrey Berman, the former uh, uh, federal prosecutor, his new book is out. Um, uh, Rachel Maddow did a great uh, interview with him last night. The book is titled Holding the Line Inside the Nation's Prominent U.S. Attorney's Office and its Battle with the Trump Justice Department. Um, but that, you know, and, and he's laying out Bill Barr's crimes. I mean, he literally corrupted the Justice Department uh, in order to help Donald Trump's friends, like, you know, Mike Flynn, and initially uh, Michael Cohen, and punish his enemies, like John Kerry. Uh, you know, Trump was demanding that he prosecute John Kerry, and Barr, Barr pushed it, tried to make it happen. But this is not the first time that Bill Barr has come to the aid. Oh, and, and Barr, you know, was obviously covering up, particularly in his cover-up of the Mueller investigation, which we all watched in real time, um, was covering up treason on the part of Donald Trump. But this isn't the first time this has happened. Back in 1992, Bill Barr was also attorney general. He was the attorney general for George H.W. Bush. And at that point in time, this, is, this was the uh, December of 1992, uh, Bush had lost the election to Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton was coming in as president. Bush was a lame duck, one-term president. And there had been this special prosecutor who was looking into Iran-Contra. Iran-Contra was the deal that Ronald Reagan cut, according to the president of Iran, uh, uh, Abdulhalan, uh, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce his first name, but Bonnie Sauter was his last name, President Bonnie Sauter. According to him, and he told the Christian Science Monitor this, just, you know, casually, um, the whole, the whole, the, there was a scheme in 1980 to have the Iranians hang on to the hostages in order to politically cripple uh, Jimmy Carter so that, so that Ronald Reagan could win the election. And sure enough, he did win that election. And, and sure enough, he did cripple Jimmy Carter. And it worked. So here you've got Lawrence Walsh, who was the f special prosecutor, and he was closing in on this, on prosecuting Reagan and Bush for treason for conspiring with a foreign government to manipulate an American election. That's treason, particularly given that Iran was an enemy of the United States at that particular moment. That's giving aid and comfort. They were literally shipping weapons to Iran in violation of U.S. law and, uh, you know, I mean, committing treason. And the key to this thing was the calendar or diary that George H.W. Bush had of his time in the White House, in the Trump, in the Reagan White House, which would have put him right at the center of this plan to have Iran hold the hostages of this, this the Iran-Contra deal of, you know, we'll send you, and in fact, you know, we were shipping um, uh, spare tires for their F-15s, uh, the, the Iranian ones, because, you know, when the Shah was there, we supplied them with all their military. When the Shah fell, uh, we cut them off, but uh, we were already shipping. During the election, Reagan had made this promise Carter was starting to crash in the polls because, you know, everybody had yellow ribbons tied around trees and stuff. And we were all mourning the, you know, we had these hostages held there and in Iran. And Reagan was already, and, and they were already shipping uh, spare tires for F-15s via Israel to Iran during the election. So, and, and it continued. I mean, it picked up speed once uh, uh, Ronald Reagan became president. So Lawrence Walsh is closing in on this investigation, and George H.W. Bush is frantic. I mean, he's going to leave office in two weeks. He's going to lose, or in four weeks, he's going to lose the protections that he had as, as president. Uh, you know, the Department of Justice has this policy of not prosecuting presidents that goes back to Nixon. It's crazy, but, you know, hey, there it is. Uh, came up, you know, a, a Republican lawyer came up with it. And... Bush is, uh, George H.W. Bush, by this point in time, Ronald Reagan is like, you know, seriously into Alzheimer. He's probably not facing any risk. But George H.W. Bush was looking at the possibility of federal charges that would have included or could have included even treason. What do you do? So he calls in Bill Barr, his attorney general, and he says, what should we do? And Bill Barr says, pardon everybody. If you pardon Casper Weinberger, who had already been convicted and then pleaded guilty, and uh, there were six of them all together, six of these guys who were in on this conspiracy. Cap Weinberger at the top, he had been, you know, Reagan's guy. And 
Bill Barr said, pardon them all, and Lawrence Walsh won't be able to proceed with his prosecution because he won't be able to call them before, before a grand jury. He won't be able to get their testimony because, you know, once you've pardoned them, I mean, that's, that's the end of that. And so on Christmas Eve of 1992, you know, five weeks before he was going to leave the White House, George H.W. Bush did exactly that. In the front page of the New York Times, um, big picture, Bush pardons six in Iran affair, averting a Weinberger trial, prosecutor assails cover-up. That was the screaming three-line wall-to-wall headline on the top of the New York Times on December 24th, on Christmas Eve of 1992. And it was Bill Barr who organized this thing. And, uh, you know, Cap Wein, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, the, the uh, federal prosecutor, Lawrence Walsh, he just, he came right out and said, this is a cover-up. I mean, he was, he was, he was uh, f- totally freaked out about it. And this, by the way, wasn't the first cover-up that Bill Barr had done. Prior to that, George H.W. Bush, when he became president, had been selling weapons of mass destruction to Saddam Hussein in violation of U.S. law. And, <laughs> you know, ironically, um, you know, how do you know you have weapons of mass destruction? Because daddy sold them to them. And, you know, the Democrats, well, not the Democrats, Lawrence Walsh was looking at prosecuting him for that, too. And so, you know, he just pardoned the whole bunch of them, and that was the end of it. As the New York Times reported, quote, Mr. Walsh bitterly condemned the president's action, charging that the Iran-Contra cover-up, which had continued for more than six years, has now been completed. Evidence of conspiracy among the highest-ranking Reagan administration officials to lie to Congress and the American public. Um, and uh, he said it also forestalled impeachment proceedings against President Reagan through a pattern of deception and obstruction. This is Lawrence Walsh, the uh, special prosecutor. So, bottom line, we're, we're uh, reaching out to Berman. I'm guessing he'll come on our show in the next couple of weeks. But, uh, you know, to hear the whole gory story about Barr's crimes in the Trump administration. But, you know, I'm not surprised by this because this is exactly what Bill Barr did for George Bush, uh, the senior and Ronald Reagan. And frankly, I think most Americans had no idea. They weren't alive in 1992, or if they were, they weren't paying attention, or they weren't carefully reading the newspapers on Christmas Eve of 1992. I mean, talk about the ultimate time to dump documents so that nobody notices. So anyhow, you can read all about it, complete with chapter and verse, you know, quotes, links, pictures over at HartmanReport.com. I think it's a big deal, and I think you should share it with everybody you know. This is the Tom Hartman Program. What is neoliberalism? Up next, stick around.